This truck is so rare that only 33 of these were ever made. So if you catch a glimpse of one, consider yourself to be lucky. And honestly, that's true for just about every pickup on this list. These are seven amazing pickup trucks you forgot about. Starting at number seven, it's the Subaru Brat. Rolling off the assembly line from 1978 to 1994, this pickup was truly one of a kind. It sported a funky blend of styles, mixing the practicality of a coupe utility with the ruggedness of a light-duty four-wheel drive system. Based on the Subaru Leone station wagon, this gem of a truck boasted full-time all-wheel drive, making it ready to tackle any terrain. While the Brat didn't make waves in Japan, it found its fan base in tons of other places, like North America, Europe, Australia, Latin America, and New Zealand. But its popularity in North America took a hit when exports ceased in 1987. That said, despite its limited availability, the Brat became a cultural icon, with famous folks like President Ronald Reagan hopping behind the wheel and popping up in TV shows, movies, and even video games. But the Brat wasn't just for show, it had some serious skills on the track too. From desert races to drag competitions, this Subaru flexed its muscles, proving its versatility in motorsport events. Under the hood, the early models packed a punch with a 1.6-liter engine. But over its production run, the Brat underwent several upgrades and design tweaks to keep it fresh. Today, the Subaru Brat remains a hot commodity among car enthusiasts and collectors, getting hefty prices at auctions. The fact that it still has a large appeal just goes to show that Subaru is the kind of brand that never dares to be different. And the same can be said for this next pickup. Because at number 6, it's Dodge Shelby Dakota. So, this is an interesting one. Back in the late 1980s, Dodge and the legendary Carroll Shelby teamed up to bring back the muscle truck trend, introducing the Dodge Shelby Dakota. Now these weren't your average pickups, they were decked out with Shelby's signature touches, making them stand out from the crowd. You could spot them from a mile away with those bold Shelby graphics plastered on the windshield, sides, and tailgate, not to mention the slick blacked out grille, bumpers, and fender flares. Carroll Shelby put his heart and soul into crafting these trucks, and it showed. Only 1,475 Dodge Shelby Dakotas were ever made each packing a punch under the hood. With a 175 horsepower fuel-injected 5.2-liter V8 engine paired with a four-speed automatic transmission, these beasts were ready to roar. But Shelby didn't stop there. He threw in some extra goodies like an electric fan, limited slip rear axle, gas pressure front and rear shocks, and a front stabilizer bar to ensure top-notch performance on and off the road. It's no wonder pickup enthusiasts still remember it fondly. This is also true for the next truck on this list. And at number 5, that's the Dodge Ram 50. This compact pickup truck was produced from 1979 to 1993. This little truck was born out of a collaboration between Mitsubishi Motors and Chrysler Corporation. Now, initially, Plymouth had its own version called the Aero Truck from 79 to 82. But when Mitsubishi started selling its own Mighty Max directly in the US, the Plymouth version was phased. Dodge didn't stop there though. They brought out the Power Ram 54WD, a tough little contender in their Power Ram 4WD lineup. It had some serious power 2.6 liter inline four engine, delivering 106 horsepower and 139 pound feet of torque, making it known for its off road prowess. Even though it wasn't the most powerful truck out there, it got a facelift in 87, the same year the Dakota hit the scene. But Dodge kept selling the Ram 50 because of its compact size and affordability, compared to the larger Dakota. After 87, you could choose between two bed lengths, a 72-inch or an 88-inch bed. And under the hood, you had options ranging from a 2.0-liter inline-4 to a 3.0-liter V6, with a turbo diesel option available from 83 to 86. This truck held its own in its segment, capable of hauling up to 1,500 pounds and towing up to 3,500 pounds. Nowadays, finding a Dodge Power Ram 50 pickup in mint condition is like finding a needle in a haystack. 
but when you do, they're usually more budget-friendly than their Toyota counterparts in the used car market. Next, there's another forgotten pickup that we haven't mentioned. At number 4, it's the Chevrolet Silverado Intimidator SS. In 2003, Chevrolet rolled out the Silverado SS, which was pretty unique as far as pickups go. It was based on the Silverado 1500 from the GMT 800 generation. But then in 2006, they took it up a notch with something special, the Intimidator SS. Now this truck was a nod to the legendary Dale Earnhardt, courtesy of Dale Earnhardt Inc. The Intimidator SS had a few tweaks that made it stand out. This included a sleek black onyx exterior, complete with Intimidator branding, a rear spoiler for that extra sporty vibe, and inside, you had embroidered headrests, plus your choice of cloth or leather seats. It was definitely a fine luing pickup, that's for sure. But its look isn't the only thing that makes it so cool. It's also the fact that it's just a super rare truck. Chevy only made 1,333 of these bad boys, and each one came with some serious power. I'm talking about a Vortex 6000 V8 engine, cranking out a massive 345 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. It's part of the reason why people consider it a true gem nowadays. And this can also be said for this next pickup. At number 3, that's the Willys FC150. So, back in 1956, Willys introduced the FC150 as part of their Jeep Forward Control series. Now, what made this truck so unique was its funky forward cab over engine setup. Basically, they put the cab right over the engine, which made it super compact and gave it a big boost in hauling power, especially off-road. Despite its cool design, the FC series didn't quite catch fire in the US. They only made around 30,000 of these between 1957 and 1963. But guess what? It found a new lease on life overseas, particularly in places like Spain and India, where it got some serious love and even saw some model upgrades. Built on the Jeep CJ5 chassis, the FC150 had a totally different body style, giving it a special look that stood out on the road. One standout model from 1957 went through a full restoration in 2013, complete with a cool all-range overdrive for smoother cruising. Even though it wasn't a big hit back in the day, the Willys FC150 is basically a collector's item nowadays. If you're a die-hard Jeep fan, I'm sure you want this in your collection. Next, at number 2, it's Dodge Rod Hall Signature Edition. This truck was part of an effort by Dodge in the 1990s to make a serious comeback, after facing a setback from the NHTSA in 1987. These limited edition trucks were a collaboration between professional off-road racers Rod Hall and Carol Shelby, who also worked on the Dodge Shelby Dakota I mentioned earlier. Together, their goal was to capture the spirit of Baja racing. The Rod Hall Signature Edition trucks were all about that rugged Baja vibe. Decked out in iconic Baja racing paint schemes, they were built to handle the toughest off-road terrain. Under the hood, you'd find a 5.2-liter V8 engine, paired with a 3-speed automatic transmission, leading to a modest 170 horsepower. But what really set these trucks apart were the high-performance upgrades. With Rancho shocks and springs, power steering, power brakes, and a sleek light bar, they were ready to take on any adventure off the beaten path. Only 33 of these Dodge Rod Hall Signature Edition trucks were ever made, making them one of the rarest pickups you can come across nowadays. Finally, there's one other pickup that's an extremely rare gem. And at number one, that's the Jeep Comanche. The Jeep Comanche was produced from 1986 to 1992. This pickup was like the Cherokee's cool cousin, being Jeep's last pickup truck until the Gladiator came along in 2019. When Chrysler took over American Motors in 87, the Comanche got a few tweaks to make it more reliable and share parts with other Chrysler rides. Underneath, it had a Quadralink front suspension, which made for a smoother ride and better off-road adventures. At the back, there were leaf springs, so it could handle a decent load. Engine-wise, you could get it with a 2.5-liter four-cylinder, a 2.8-liter V6, or a beefy 4.0-liter straight-six with different transmissions to suit your style. 
Even though it was a tough little truck with lots of options, the Comanche eventually got the axe, partly because it was competing with its sibling, the Dodge Dakota, within the Chrysler family. Still, it's remembered fondly by Jeep fans for its versatility and rugged charm. Now, if you want to check out some more content on trucks, make sure to click on this next video.